Hi. In this episode of Sex 101, we're talking about how the sexual parts that God created are instruments of righteousness. The guilt and shame associated with immorality can lead to neglect of following the biblical imperative to offer all the parts of our body to God as instruments of righteousness. Somehow, we easily see how certain parts can be instruments of wickedness when they're used in sin. But then we miss how all our parts can be made clean in Jesus and become instruments of righteousness when used as God intended. Our sexual parts have an important role in marital intimacy. Recall that scripture says that the husband's body does not belong to him alone, but also to his wife. And the wife's body does not belong to her alone, but also to the husband. Shout Jesus from the mountains and Jesus in the street. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name. The immediate application here is God is telling us not to withhold sexual pleasure or intimacy from our husband or our wife. It should not be a surprise that the devil works as hard to disrupt righteous intimacy within marriage as he works to inspire sinful sexual activities outside of marriage. God's intent is for husband and wife to be one flesh through ongoing sexual intimacy. Our sexual parts also have a key role in fulfilling the instruction of Scripture to be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Yes, the fall and the resulting decay and disease put some barriers here, but the normal, created and righteous use of one's sexual parts is the conception and bearing of children within marriage. We note that the devil is also working hard to disrupt this righteous use of our sexual parts. Men should also use their testosterone to be strong and courageous and act like men without apology or shame. We must resist intrusions into our God-given authority as priests and kings of our households. Let us not be emasculated. Using every body part as an instrument of righteousness aligns with the fact that everything God created is good. Hanging on to the guilt and the shame can create unneeded temptation. If marital intimacy and childbearing seem dirty or undesirable, we should ask the Lord Jesus to fully redeem our sexual parts unless we have the gift of celibacy. Following Jesus does not bring our sexual parts from being instruments of wickedness to being neutral. Every part can and should be an instrument of righteousness. So, if you're single, preserve the purity of your sexual parts to serve as proper instruments to procreate and pleasure your spouse when the time comes. And single or married, Men must act like men without accepting emasculation. And if you're married, you know what to do. You have God's permission. You have God's blessing. Yay! You even have God's imperative. The good life is the land where the big grapes grow, milk and honey flow. From the morning till the night, everybody's singing to Jesus. Yeah, the good life is the land where the big grapes grow, milk and honey flow. From the morning till the night, and everybody's singing to Jesus. Oh, I, I love Jesus. La 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 Tell me, do you care to obey? Hi.
From 2016 to 2022, I've never asked for contributions and none of my platforms are monetized. I'm generally more favorable to giving to widows and orphans than to giving to preachers. The Holy Spirit has spoken to me. Jesus cares about the girls in these homes. I just completed Christian leadership training with Dr. Mark Rutland, who founded Global Servants. I've reviewed their financials, and I am impressed both with their accountability and the large proportion of contributions directly supporting their girls in Ghana and Thailand. Please visit their website, globalservants.org, and pray about giving to these girls through them. Tell me, do you care to obey?